Thank you for watching the VSL Aviation Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Lake. Today, we're going to discuss the practical use of building uh, a weight and balance profile into ForeFlight. Now, this video isn't about the basics of weight and balance. This is really about uh, building weight and balance profile into ForeFlight. That's all we're going to cover. Uh, we might cover a little bit of the basic terminology and stuff, but to really learn that, I would suggest you visit Free Pilot Training. My friend Josh over there has a great video out about the basics of weight and balance. So I'd watch that video first if you're new to weight and balance, and then watch this video on how you can use that information and the stuff I'm about to discuss to build a profile into ForeFlight, which is going to make building your day-to-day -day weight and balance uh, for each mission that you do a lot easier. So watch his channel first, and then come back here and watch this. Now, if you already know weight and balance and you're just wanting to learn uh, more about how to do that into ForeFlight, then this is the video for you because we're going to cover that in hopefully less than about 30 minutes. So let's get started. Step one is you're going to need to do, uh, you're going to need to find some information. And there's a few pieces of information we need to find before we even go to ForeFlight. The, the first thing is going to be to find the arms of the different stations in your aircraft. So I've got a uh, slideshow here that kind of talks through that. If you're lucky enough to have a POH that's a little more modern, you're going to have a picture like this, which makes finding the arms really easy. I've got each arm for the pilot, the rear seat passenger, the baggage compartment, and uh, another baggage compartment here uh, just drawn out for me and labeled. Um, however, not all POHs are like that. So uh, those would be the arms, the, the numbers on the left, and then we can also refer to those as stations. Uh, the term stations, that's important when using ForeFlight because that's how ForeFlight talks about the arm is they call it a station. Uh, now, if you're unlucky or flying an older aircraft, you're going to have uh, a, probably a moment table. You may not even have a moment table. There might be some other uh, table to run, so you might have to manually calculate the arms. So for some reason, the older aircraft just didn't come out and list the arms of the stations. They would give you a table to run instead. But they would give you one of these sample loading problems, and this is out of a 172F POH. Um, and so this, the sample uh, loading problem, we can actually derive our arms from the information gathered here. So we can see we've got four different stations here for the pilot, uh, the fuel, the rear passengers, and the baggage. The four stations, that's pretty standard for any aircraft, uh, except maybe a 150 or 152, you might just have three stations. But for a 172 or a Cherokee 140, uh, something like that. You're going to have four stations generally. So we're going to take uh, just this information here and find our arms and see how we do that. So first we're going to look at our moment. Our moment is actually um, divided by a thousand to make the numbers a little bit easier to work with. So we're going to, first thing we're going to do is take those numbers, the moments, and we're going to multiply them by a thousand. Um, so but by multiplying the, the 12.2 uh, by 1,000, we get uh, 12,200. Pretty easy. We're going to go down the list and find all of those, what we'll call them expanded moments. And that's the actual moment. Uh, the manufacturers divide by 1,000 to make the numbers a little bit easier to work with. So instead of working with 12,200, you're, you're working with 12.2. So that fits on the table a little bit better. Uh, so it just makes it easier to, to work with there. Uh, now, to find the actual arm, all we have to do is divide that moment, that expanded moment, by the weight in the sample loading problem that they gave us. So since we know the moment, we can find the arm by dividing the moment by the arm, uh, or dividing the moment by the weight to equal the arm. So uh, something that Josh talks about is the WAM acronym, the weight times arm equals moment. Uh, well, we can... We can do some algebra there, some basic math, and just say, well, moment, you know, if weight times arm equals moment, then moment divided by weight equals arm. So that's what we did here. And we found um, the arms listed uh, line up pretty nicely with what, uh, and this is a later model 172, the picture on the right, but the arms for the 172F on the left line up pretty closely to the stations uh, with the 172 on the right. So... If you're doing it the easy way, I showed you how to do that, just find it in the POH. If you're doing it the hard way, you can calculate the arms yourself. So that's step one, is to find the arms for the stations. The next thing we need to do is find the uh, CG limits for our aircraft. And 
here's where it can also get a little confusing because some POHs list the CG limits and some manuals don't. So newer aircraft tend to have that information in the limitations section. So check in the limitations section and it should list the forward and aft CG limits at different weights, usually the lightweight and heavyweight. Um, for this 172F, it didn't list that information, but you can find that information on, on the type certificate data sheet for the 172. So I'm going to show you how to find that real quick. Uh, you're just going to open up any web browser and you're going to search for FAA DRS. And that should take you to this website called the Dynamic Regulatory System. Uh, on the left search bar there, you're going to just type in the words TC or the, the letters TCDS. And you're going to click on the first link and it, it's going to pull up this little database looking thing, uh, query tool for the TCDS. And you're going to expand the model and type in 172 if you're searching for 172 and scroll down until there we are. We, we can see our 172 uh, series here. Uh, we're going to choose the 172F and hit apply. And our search results are going to come up with the 172 TCDS which uh, the TCDS number for the 172 is 3 alpha 1 2. You can see it doesn't really matter which one you clicked on, it would have pulled up the same document because this TCDS covers the whole span of 172 models all the way up to the S model, which is, I believe, the one that's in current production. So now all we have to do is scroll down until we find the, the bold headings here list the models that this paragraph covers. So we're on like paragraph 2 that covers the A and B model. So we're going to keep scrolling until we find the one that covers the F model. So there's the C. I believe it's one more page down. Internet connection here is not the greatest, so it takes a little bit to load. And here we are. Models, uh, so it looks like we're in paragraph 4, models 172 D, E, F, G, H. Continued. Uh, and here are our CG ranges right here. So there's our CG range. Um, and we have a normal and utility category listed. So that's the second thing that we need. We've got our CG range uh, limitations found in the TCDS. Uh, the next thing that we're going to need is the actual uh, current weight and balance for the aircraft. Now this, you might be asking yourself, well, isn't that what we're calculating here? Well, no, we're, we're calculating kind of the, the mission weight and balance. The aircraft's actual current weight and balance is one that's signed by an A&P that was usually the, the you'll find that they were done mathematically several years ago when the avionics were installed something's been removed from the aircraft and installed uh, that forces us to to calculate a new weight and balance that's the one that we're looking for I've got kind of a bad picture of one but it, it works uh, this is of a 172 F uh, that I used to have here, and it's the, the current weight and balance. You can see that it's done in 1979, so it was done quite a long time ago, but that's the last time anything was removed and exchanged in the aircraft. So they removed an MK-12 and installed a couple of different other radios, and they came up with uh, a new aircraft em empty weight of 1440.2 and a new aircraft empty CG of 33.82. So we need that information. So we've got our, our three main pieces of info that we need. Now we're ready to go to Four Flights website. Um, now, I would suggest that you do this on Four Flights website just to create the weight and balance profile. Of course, when you're using it, 90% of the time you're going to be using it in the app, but I would suggest creating the weight and balance on a desktop just because you're doing a lot of data entry and the app's not the best. I just don't like typing in the, the app that much. So I think it's a little bit easier to do that on a laptop or desktop computer using the ForeFlight website. So you can pull up any browser, go to ForeFlight.com, type in your username and password, and you'll have access to that. A lot of people have never used the online, uh, the web-based function of ForeFlight and understand why. It's really an app. But this is one area where I think the, the website's a little bit better to use when you're building a weight and balance. So I built a new uh, aircraft profile, I'm just called it 1234X-Ray. Um, the first thing we come to uh, when we're building the aircraft profile, uh, as far as weight goes, is just to enter in the basic empty weight. So we, again, we have that information from our weight and balance sheet here. So 1440.2 is what we're going to enter in, our basic empty weight of 1440.2. Uh, and then our max zero fuel weight. So let's go back to the TCDS. If you scroll down, you can see that our maximum uh, weight is 2300, and we have no 
uh, published zero fuel weight or anything else. So it's going to be 2300 all around. So 2300 for takeoff weight, landing weight, ramp weight, that's all the same. If you're flying a bigger aircraft, it's common that these numbers are different. You might have a takeoff weight uh, that's much higher than a landing weight. So this is, you, you might hear of uh, uh, airliners occasionally taking off, having an emergency, and having to dump fuel to get down to an appropriate landing weight. And this is why, is because their takeoff weight is normally much higher than their maximum landing weight. But for a little 172 or Cherokee, basically any piston single engine that you're flying, it's probably not going to have a zero fuel weight published. These max weights are all going to be the same. So that's the case here is they're all the same. So 1440.2 basic empty weight. All of our uh, max weights are loaded. Now we're going to add a weight and balance profile, and we're just going to do a blank template. Now, if you're subscribing to a higher level of floor flight, you might have some default templates. Feel free to use those, but you still want to go through this exercise to make sure that the CG uh, for the empty aircraft weight uh, is specific to your aircraft. So just double check it. And then it'll also give you, a, I think, more confidence in what you're using here. Uh, I'm going to call this normal. Uh, so November uh, 1234 X ray, uh, normal, normal category. Okay. And I had the, uh, going to capitalize those because I want it to look nice. Uh, I'm calling this normal category because I don't want um, the utility category. It can't really be in the same profile. So I'm, I'll, if I was going to use utility category, I would go through this whole exercise and create a separate utility category profile uh, from the normal category. So basic empty weight, I'm going to plug in again 1440.2. Uh, oh, that's the empty CG, sorry. So we'll go back to our weight and balance. Our empty CG is 33.82. So 33.82 and 1440.2 is our empty weight. Uh, you can see we only have three stations. We need four, so we'll, we're going to add a station, and we're going to call it a row of seats, and we'll call this rear seats. Uh, and then the arm, we'll go ahead and define that. Remember, our arm back here, rear seats, is 70. So we're going to save that. Uh, our cockpit. Notice it doesn't have an arm defined, so we're going to hit edit. Uh, we're going to edit this. Our front seats are 35.9. We'll just go ahead and call it 36. Save that. Uh, our cargo station now. Uh, cargo baggage area is 95.4. So we'll do 95.4. You would want to uh, check, and we're going to rename this baggage. Um, you would want to set a weight limit in accordance with your POH. So let's say if your rear baggage compartment could only have 120 pounds, you would want to put that aft limit in there of 120 pounds. Not air, all aircraft have that, but they could. Uh, so next is our fuel tank. Um, we're going to edit our fuel tank as our fuel station was at 48.1. So 48.1 here. And then we need to have a maximum uh, weight limit for our fuel. So for this, we go back to our TCDS, and we see that our fuel capacity is uh, a maximum of 39 gallons. So we know that fuel weighs uh, six, pound, six pounds per gallon. So if we go to uh, just a simple calculator and we take 39 times six, we get 234. So we're going to type in 234 here and save that. Uh, you'll notice we have a variable fuel station. Uh, this would be if you're going to load a moment table. This is very common in a, in a larger aircraft like a, a King Air would have a moment table you would have to load into there. So if you're doing a moment table, uh, basically you'll know if you're doing a moment table or not. Uh, for a, a small piston aircraft, just a fixed uh, arm table is fine. Uh, so I navigated away from that. Uh, fuels 48.1. So 48.1 with a limit of 234. I've got that saved. So we've got our stations built, each arm for the station, uh, and then weight limit for the baggage and the fuel compart or the, the fuel tanks. Uh, so now we can load our CG limitations. So back to our TCDS, we can see that uh, we've got four numbers here, uh, a forward CG and aft CG at 2,300 pounds, 
and then a Ford and aft CG at 1950 or less. So we're, we're going to go ahead and load those. We'll load the Ford CGs first. So 38.5 and 35. So 38.5. at 2300 and I have a terrible memory 35 so we'll add a limit there 35 at I uh, believe it was uh, 1950 okay so that's our forward limits and then our aft limits are gonna they're both 47.3 at 23 and 1950 so 47.3 at 2300 and 47.3 at 1950. So the problem with this one now is that uh, the 1950 is heavier than what our lightest weight could possibly be, right? Our basic empty weight is 1440. So what we're going to have to do is add uh, another row of limits for our lower limit. So remember, uh, this lower line here said 1950 or less. So we're going to take that or less and take it down to 1440.2, which is our basic empty weight. So we can't be any lighter than that. Uh, and sorry, we're going to 35 there, 35 inches at 1440.2. And then we're going to do the same thing here at 47.3 at 1440.2. So now that kind of pulled the CG down to include our lighter weights that we could be operating at. So we're just going to double check all these. We've got a 38.5, 23, 35, 1950, 35, 14, 40, 38.5, 35, yep, and 47.3, 47.3, 23, 1950. Just double checking all these numbers. They look good to me. The envelope looks good. It's square. It's kind of the expected shape that I uh, expected it to see. So I think we're ready to test this out and see how it works on the app. So all we're going to do here is hit save. And now I'm going to pull up the app. Are you nervous about an upcoming check ride? Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a designated pilot examiner? In this show, I give you a behind the scenes look of the FAA check ride process. I'll show you best practices on how to have a successful check ride, common errors that applicants struggle with, and share with you some of the valuable knowledge I've gained throughout my 15 year career in military and civilian aviation. For more information about the show, visit our website, vsl.aero slash podcast. There you'll find the show library, various ways to support the show, and links to purchase our interactive Airman Certification Standards Study Guide. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a five-star review. And most importantly, tell your aviation friends about the show. This is listener-supported content, and I plan on keeping it that way. So any way you can support the show through Patreon or PayPal is greatly appreciated. Consider how much you would normally pay for an hour of ground school with an experienced CFI. Thanks for listening, and back to the show. All right, now that I have the app pulled up, I've got all zeros for uh, loading. So the, the app's already built. I built that, again, on the website. So in the app, all I'm doing is loading it with my current profile. So my preferred method is uh, I've, got, uh, I've got saved loads. So like I've got myself built in there. So I'm going to say I'm going to fly with my daughter Brink, uh, and then we're going to take, uh, we've got like 10 pounds of baggage, we'll say. So I load the 10 pounds of baggage. And then we're going to take off with full fuel of 39 gallons, and then we're going to burn a gallon for taxi, um, and we're going to we're going to fly for uh, an hour and a half or so. So we're going to burn um, 15 gallons of fuel. So I can see here, I've got my zero fuel weight is forward CG, but my takeoff and landing weight is is within limits there. But my zero fuel weight is a little too far forward. Uh, which is an issue in this particular plane, I remember. So uh, we typically had some ballast in the back, so we could do like a case of oil strapped down. Uh, let's just say we're going to have uh, 50 pounds of baggage in the back, and that brought us within, uh, we're, we're all within limits. Our, our empty weight is in inbounds as well as our takeoff and landing weight. Um, so that's that's how I'd use this from flight to flight. Uh, having the saved loads is really helpful because you can have people that you fly with regularly or uh, or loads that you fly with regularly. So I have like an overnight 
a baggage load of 120 pounds or a vacation load of 50. Uh, that's for the travel errors because we have a, a forward and an aft baggage compartment. So I can just throw our overnight bag up front and our vacation bag in the back. I kind of know how much those load or those weigh. And then I've got my family weights in there as well as uh, crew members that I regularly fly with in the Part 135 if I'm flying different aircraft. So you can you can play with four flight like that, and uh, you can move stuff around really easily to see uh, what you're flying with and not having to build the, the profile every time. Now, there is a, mine might look a little bit different than your profile. If you go to your More tab and your Account, uh, you have this four flight labs option. And you can turn on or off enhanced weight and balance. I'm not sure what uh, profile level that comes with on ForeFlight, but I've got mine turned on. So my enhanced weight and balance might look slightly different from the weight and balance that, that you have there. Uh, at any rate, that's the basics of building a weight and balance profile in ForeFlight. Once you do this, like I said, it becomes really easy to do these uh, weight and balance sheets before every flight and you can have kind of your your standard loads saved uh, and it, it's just really repeatable and user friendly and, and uh, that's the only way that I do weight and balance uh, when I'm flying uh, civilian aircraft so it's really helpful. I hope you found the video helpful. I hope you understand better how to use for flight uh, weight and balance functionality and uh, if you have any questions or comments please feel free to uh, to leave the comments below visit our website, bsl.aero slash podcast. That's where you'll find out more on how to support the show. Uh, I've got the, the Patreon going. Uh, there's also a way you can donate through PayPal. Uh, but anything you can do to help support the show, I'd really appreciate it. It helps me uh, free up time in my schedule so I can do more content like this. So thanks, to, uh, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. See you.